normal saline the most commonly prescribed iv fluid in the hospitals we hang these bottles every day in our opd in the wards in the operation theaters and also in the icu but have you ever paused to think if normal saline is really normal hi i am dr saurav and i am working as icu consultant for more than 15 years and today i am going to decode this mystery for you so friends watch this video till the end and if you have come for the first time on this channel then do subscribe this channel for more such clinical videos and also an interesting quiz on this topic is waiting for you in the description box so without wasting much time let's start the video so first what is the composition of normal saline normal saline is also called as 0.9% saline and this is because each 100 ml each 100 ml contains 0.9 grams of sodium chloride and hence it is also called as 0.9% saline and if you see the sodium content then each 1 liter of normal saline contains 154 milliequivalents of sodium and also 154 milliequivalents of chloride and the osmolarity of normal saline is 308 and the osmolarity of plasma is 275 to 295 so this fluid is uh, almost isotonic or you can say it is slightly hypertonic so this is the composition of normal saline so what is the abnormality then so here is the chart here we have compared normal saline with plasma and the important thing to note is about chloride content chloride in plasma is 103 milliequivalents per liter and that in normal saline is 154 milliequivalents per liter so it is much higher similarly in plasma the sodium is 140 milliequivalents per liter and that in normal saline is 154 milliequivalents per liter so if we see the ratio of sodium to chloride in plasma this ratio is 1.4 is to 1 and the same ratio in normal saline is 1 is to 1 so the chloride content in normal saline is very high as compared to that in the plasma and this is the main abnormality or main problem and also there are also other differences like potassium calcium magnesium and various types of buffers they are absent in normal saline and the ph of normal saline is very acidic as compared to that of plasma so these are the important differences between normal saline and plasma and the main problem is the high chloride content so what's the big deal if the chloride content of normal saline is higher yes it is a big deal when we infuse large amount of normal saline so when we give more than 2 liters of normal saline it also depends on the size of the patient and also the renal status of the patient but in general when we give more than 2 liters of normal saline there starts something called as hyperchloremic acidosis and the risk of hyperchloremic acidosis increases multifold when we give more than 3 to 4 liters of normal saline now we will see with the help of stewart's approach what is hyperchloremic acidosis so in the patient's plasma the total number of positive ions and the total number of negative ions are always equal and this is to maintain the electrochemical neutrality now what are the positive ions present in plasma the main positive ion present in plasma is sodium and the other positive ions are like potassium magnesium and calcium the main negative ions in the plasma are the important one is the chloride and the other is biocarbonate and there are also other unmeasured anions now if we minus chloride from the positive ions 
we get what is called as strong ion difference and the unmeasured anions in the plasma they form anion gap now we will see what happens when we give large amount of normal saline so when large amount of normal saline is given the chloride content in plasma increases so this was the initial level of the chloride now it has increased to this level so now this is the new chloride content level now what has, what will happen here due to the increased chloride content the biocarbonate content in the plasma is reduced and the unmeasured anions they remain same now here the strong ion difference has reduced and the anion gap is same so according to the stewards approach if the strong ion difference reduce then we call it as acidosis and also we know that when the bicarbonate content reduces then it is acidosis so now what type of patients are at the risk of hyperchloremic acidosis so these are the patients where large volume resuscitation is required like the surgical patients the trauma patients also the burn patients here large volume resuscitation is required and also shock particularly the hypovolemic shock and septic shock so these are the patients that are at very high risk of hyperchloremic acidosis so hyperchloremic acidosis due to large volume resuscitation with normal saline is not just a theoretical concept and it has many important clinical consequences so what are these consequences the most important is vasoconstriction of afferent arteriole in the glomerulus due to which there is decreased in the glomerular filtration rate and then this leads to acute kidney injury there is also vasic vasoconstriction in the splanchnic circulation and this can lead to decreased gastric emptying ileus and also translocation of gut bacteria into blood and which can lead to sepsis also due to acidosis there is decreased myocardial contractility and also the response to the catecholamines is also reduced and this can lead to shock there is also reduced platelet function and also decreased function of the coagulation enzymes and this can lead to bleeding due to large volume of normal saline there can also be pulmonary edema and there can also be electrolyte imbalances like hypernatremia and hyperkalemia so these are the important consequences of hyperchloremic acidosis so now what is the solution the trials like the smart trial and salt ed trial have shown that when large volume resuscitation is required then there are better outcomes if we use balanced crystalloids this will be more clear to you from this table so here we have two examples of balanced crystalloid one is the plasma light and other is the ringer lactate now focus on the chloride content the chloride in the plasma light is 98 and that in the ringer lactate is 109 and that in the normal saline is 154 so the chloride content in the balanced crystalloids is equivalent to that present in the plasma other important thing is that balanced crystalloids contain other electrolytes also like potassium magnesium calcium etc and the third important difference is that the balanced crystalloids also contain various buffers so when a large volume resuscitation is required these buffers they prevent the acidosis so when a large volume resuscitation is required we should ideally use balanced crystalloids so by this time you may be thinking that normal saline is a villain and you may be wondering if this fluid really has any uses or not so this is not the case normal saline is a good fluid and it has many uses so what are the uses of normal saline so it is it can be used for initial resuscitation in the conditions like dehydration burns sepsis and hemorrhage and when a large volume resuscitation is required you should ideally shift to balanced crystalloids it can also be used for a short term maintenance with dextrose this fluid is also used for drug dilution 
and important thing is that normal saline is compatible with blood then this is a very important fluid to be given in head injury and neurosurgery remember that this normal saline is slightly hypertonic so when it is used in neurosurgery or uh, in head injury patients it does not cause cerebral edema this is a very good fluid in hypovolemic hyponatremia so when hyponatremia is due to hypovolemia then normal saline is a very good fluid and this fluid is also very helpful in hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis we have seen that normal saline causes hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis so when there is hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis in conditions like vomiting or nasogastric suction then this fluid can be used it is also used for lavage for irrigation as a flush for wound cleaning and also for sample preparation in laboratory so these are the various uses of normal saline so normal saline our favorite fluid it is nearly isotonic but it is not physiologic if large volume resuscitation is done with normal saline it can lead to hyperchloremic acidosis and renal problems so use this fluid judiciously if you find today's video helpful give it a like share with your friends and if you have come for the first time on this channel then do subscribe this channel for more such clinical videos and also an interesting quiz is waiting for you in the description box don't forget to solve it see you in the next video till then thank you